Yeah, what up? Welcome back to another video, guys. Here we have my 2024 Lowrider ST tobacco fade, and she is sounding superb. Get a chop. Oh, the SP concept in combination with that Sakurama 43 cam is the best sound out there right now. Um, so I wanted to make a video today. Obviously, we are back from our Milwaukee trip, which was last week. And what I wanted to do was get on the bike and talk about some good tips for anyone that's planning a long ride. We got a hot one in our hands today. High of 95 degrees out here in dirty Jersey. Partly cloudy, got some blue skies though. So anyways, I took the trip last week from New Jersey out to Milwaukee. What a great ride. My longest ride so far. Prior to that, my longest ride was from New Jersey to New Hampshire. That was really nice as well. New Jersey to New Hampshire was about five and a half to six hours. Um, Milwaukee, it's more of a 14 hour ride. If you're gonna do it directly nonstop, but even at that, with stops and everything, you're probably looking at 16 to 17 hours. Um, we broke it off in two days. Reasons why is because we just didn't want to burn ourselves. And we wanted to stop by and get to know wherever we were going to stop at. So what we did is that we left Jersey, rode all the way out to Ohio. And once we got to uh, Toledo, Ohio, we stopped there for the night, got a hotel. And um, the next morning we got up finished off the ride which we had another five hours left but on the way up we also stopped by in Chicago so that took a little longer because we stopped by there and then ended up that day at Milwaukee amazing ride if you've been watching my content for a long time you know that I'm not the long distance type of rider I'm, I'm not one of these channels out here that are doing videos on traveling all over the country I don't do that um, but little by little I am getting more into longer rides and I'm enjoying them a lot more. I really am. So this video is basically for anyone that really hasn't gone on a long ride. And what I want to go over is what to expect. And then also give you some good tips on how to prepare yourself. What to do on the ride to keep yourself not tired or entertained or whatever it may be. So first things first, let's talk about packing. Right before you go on that ride, you need to know what you're going to pack, how much to pack, and what to pack, right? So we left New Jersey on a Wednesday morning, returned back Sunday evening. So a five day trip in total from Wednesday to Sunday. Now it was four of us on bikes and there was two chase cars with trailers trailing the rest of the bikes. So we got lucky, there were chase cars. So instead of packing our bags on our bikes, what we did is that we just put our bags in the trucks that were going out there, which was a plus. But if it wasn't for that, um, I would have had to either get a sissy bar for my bike or get a rack for the bag and then just strap the bag down. So obviously you're gonna know that you're gonna need either a rack for your bike, even if you have a bagger, um, a rack or a sissy bar will, will, will do you great. You can strap down your bag. Um, and pack everything in there. What I packed in my bags on my bike was rain gear. Rain gear is very, very important. And yes, it was used. I used it going and coming back. So on the left bag, I had rain gear. I had two extra pair of socks, two extra pair of underwear. I also had a t-shirt and an extra pair of pants. That's all I had in the bags. On the right side of the bag, I had an air pump. I had some hats. I also had a small bag in there where I pack up all my necessities and that being a toothbrush, uh, toothpaste, floss, lotion, hand sanitizer, whatever it is you're going to pack in that small bag, I had it all in there. I like to keep myself nice and separated, nice and clean. I don't just like to throw everything in bags. Everything needs to be organized. Um, I also had a cleaning supply from Blockhead in there, my cleaning shiny kit. And then a few towels just to wipe down the bike. Um, and there I also had my GoPro little pack, which is like the size of this bar bag right here. Pack up all my GoPro stuff in there. Uh, extra SD cards, extra batteries, chargers, phone chargers. Um, anything I'm gonna need for my cameras or my phone, I pack up in that. Now in my main bag that I put on the truck, 
um, I had all my extra clothes that I wasn't aware during the week. Now me, I travel a lot outside of the country. Me and my wife, we travel all over the place and I've gotten really good at packing. Uh, at packing light at that. I like to pack light. Um, you really don't need as much as you think you need when you're on a trip. Um, you can mix and match stuff. You can pack a certain way. Um, and yeah, I, I just hate to pack heavy. So in that bag, I had uh, maybe three t-shirts. I had uh, a pair of pants um, and some van sneakers because riding out there, I had my Harley boots, waterproof. Um, and then while I was going to be in Milwaukee, I wanted something more comfortable just to walk around, chill, and do what I had to do. Um, so I packed up uh, some vans in there. Um, what else did I have in that bag? I also had additional socks and underwear because honestly, that, that's like the most essential thing you're going to need extra at, which I always take just extra, extra because you just never know. And that's always socks and underwear. The worst thing you can do is walk around with wet socks or a dirty underwear. I just, no, I just, I, I can't. I need to have extra socks, extra underwear, and that's it. So, all in total, I had three pair of pants, three or four t-shirts, and that was it for five days, man. That's all I needed. My riding jeans, which I used to go, I wore those Wednesday and Thursday, and they're riding back Sunday and Monday, because we actually got home Monday, not Sunday. Um, I wore them again because they're just my riding jeans. Then while I was out in Milwaukee, I had a pair of Vans pants, two, two pair of Vans pants, and that was it. Now, I made sure to leave space in that bag because me, I don't know about you guys, but anywhere I go, I'm always shopping for extra t-shirts or just stuff to bring back home or souvenirs and stuff. So I like to give myself some space to pack extra stuff in there. Now, on that long ride, and it was hot and sunny the whole time, I make sure to wear something light, uh, but I also put on the arm sleeves just to protect my arms from the sun beating on them all day. No, I did not wear any riding gear when it comes to jackets or heavy set outerwear. It, it's like 95 degrees, I wasn't gonna do that, I'm sorry. So a t-shirt and my arm sleeves just to keep my arms from not cooking up. I was cool the whole time. I felt good. I didn't feel overheated. I wear a full face helmet because I like to and also because I'm motor vlog. So I had one helmet. I also took an additional helmet because my wife flew out there and I wanted her to wear a full face helmet. So I took my belt out there as well. That was also attached with the bag that I put on the truck. Now for your phone, I highly recommend anyone getting a phone mount on your bike. I absolutely love this thing. I'm able to A, put my directions on there, look at my map and know where I'm going, which is the most important thing. If I have an incoming call, I can see who's calling as well. I also have my Cardo Pack Talk uh, connected onto my helmet. So while I was going out there, I was listening to my podcast just to keep myself entertained. Honestly, you're doing a lot of highway miles. Is it the funniest thing in the world at times? No, it's especially going through Indiana and Ohio. It's nothing but cornfields. That's all you see. So yes, you are focused on the road ahead of you. But at the same time, I want to either listen to music or I want to listen to a podcast. I like to listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, so that's what I was doing for the most part. Battery life on that lasted me about nine hours, which was pretty good. So a, a day worth of riding. Um, and I had my music and, and my audio, man. No, it was awesome. And if you want to connect with your friends to know exactly where you're going to be turning at, if you want to be coming off an exit, if you want to go through love, you can just communicate with that. So that's, that's an awesome plus right there. I recommend that to anyone doing a long distance, just getting a, uh, a Bluetooth device for you to communicate with your friends on the road. Um, when you're on the road, guys, take as many breaks as you want. All right. If you know, if it's your first time going on a long trip and you're going on a long trip with people who sometimes do take those longer rides just make sure to tell them hey listen this is my first ride that i'm doing x amount of miles i don't know how i'm going to be feeling um you know I'm, if if i do feel tired or fatigued thirsty or whatever it is you know is it cool if we pull over here and there of course you know you pull over for a few minutes a you want to stretch out because you're gonna you know you get cramped up just sitting all day um you want to stretch out 
and you want to keep yourself hydrated for the most part drink a lot of water gatorade or whatever it is if you need yourself a red bull to keep up do that as well um but stay hydrated especially for the hot weather guys like we were riding through 95 degree weather 98 92 degree weather you get the sun beaming down at you trust me it takes it out of you so uh, every fuel stop or and, and that's the reason why we kind of took a little bit too long to get there is because our fuel stops instead of just fueling stretching getting a drink and leaving we were kind of just like fuel stretch drink get a bite to eat a snack or something and then we would just stay there just talking smack the whole time for about 40 minutes uh but i mean we, we just did it because you know my friends and i we just were always joking around talking and trying to have a good time wherever we go so the only time we pulled over to get some rest or fuel or drink was anytime we had to fuel up now going from new jersey to milwaukee we fueled up six times uh in the whole distance um if you want to know about the miles we did about close to 1900 miles going and coming back uh, that was with a little bit of riding around Milwaukee. Um, so a good, good trip. About 900 miles to go and about another 900 miles to come back. Really good experience, man. But taking little breaks when you got up, get yourself light snacks. I don't recommend you eating anything really heavy. Um, stay away from the dairies. Stay away from anything that can really kind of make you go to the bathroom, to be honest. You want to, uh, you know, drink a lot of fluids and eat some solid stuff some protein bars, uh, fruits, stuff like that. Stuff that's gonna give you nutrition and, and uh, be light on your body and you don't have to worry about going to the bathroom. So keep that in mind. Whatever you eat is very, very important, especially the night before. I, I, I mean, I, me, myself, I tend to kind of eat clean for the most part, um, but yeah. Now, what really kind of helped me a lot for those long miles was having the uh, passenger pegs in the back. So I was kind of able to stretch my legs back instead of having my feet right here where my mid controls are. I would just take my legs, rest them in the back in the backpacks. And it just allowed me to change my body position, get my legs in a different position. Um, you also have the option if you have a crash bar and you can put your legs towards it. Um, so moving around your legs helps out a lot. Um, having a tall windshield helps out a lot. This is an 8 inch uh, Clockworks bronze windshield um, and it uh, people just they just weren't cross whatever. Um, yeah, it, this takes all the wind off for you. So if you have a low rider ST, highly recommend you going with a taller windshield like this, even taller if you want if you're a taller rider. Um, it's a huge, huge advantage because you don't have all that wind beating on you all day, fatiguing you. Um, wind protection is a plus and a must to me. Um, what else? What we spoke about? We spoke about wind protection, taking breaks, staying replenished with fluids. Um, spoke about the phone mount. We spoke about everything that I packed. Uh, what else? What else? Any other good tips? We spoke about music. We spoke about the Bluetooth device. Um, overall, I mean, if you want to have a good, comfortable ride, just before you go on a long ride, just make sure you, you get some good upgrades as well, man. Like for me, for example, the Clockworks windshield and a good seat, a good seat and then a good bar and riser setup. Whatever setup you have, um, if you're thinking about changing your bar and riser setup, think about comfort first. Obviously, you want something to look good, but also think about comfort. I felt really good with the setup that I have. I have an 8-inch um, Krauss setup right here. Low bend bar. My arms were never tired. They were never kind of fatigued. I wish it was a little closer to me because it, uh, it would have made me feel a little bit more comfortable. But it, it was a good setup. The seat. The seat did awesome, man. This little pair of seat. Got the tail whip on here. It was really comfortable. No complaints whatsoever on it. Um, yeah, so good seat, good bar and visor setup, good windshield to cover you from the wind. And that's pretty much it. And lastly, I mean, if you're going to go on that trip solo by yourself, enjoy it. Be careful out there. Know where you're going to get into. Um, and if you're going to go with a group of friends, make sure to pick out a good group of friends that are outgoing. Like I said, the rain gear, we used it. 
be very mindful of the weather. The weather, the weather, the weather. Oh, the weather. I got rain down going, rain down coming back. At first, when I was going, there was a light drizzle, and then we started to notice that it was going to get heavier. So what we did is that we pulled over, put the rain gear on, and kept going. We knew the rain was coming. Um, I just didn't put the rain gear on ahead of time because it was hours behind. I just didn't want to get super hot underneath that rain gear. Coming back, though, we made a mistake. We knew it was going to rain soon, but due to the fact that it was hot, once again, we just didn't put it. And then the rain, it didn't start like the first time. It didn't start with a drizzle. The rain this time started with just a storm out of nowhere. We got drenched and had to pull over. We had to go to a truck stop, <laughs> put our stuff in the dryer, wait there another hour. So we killed it an hour right there trying to dry our clothes. We dried it, then put the rain gear on and kept going. But just be very mindful of the rain. Look at the, at the weather app. Know when it's coming. Look at the forecast. Know which way the rain's coming, how fast it's coming, which direction is coming. And, and just be ahead of it because the last thing you want to do is put rain gear over wet clothes. Be ahead of it and be very mindful of that. Um, but always have the rain gear on you. Easy access to throw it on. Nice and easy. The rain gear I use is on Torque. So if you guys want to, you know, get yourself some of that rain gear, I'll, the links are down below. You guys can check that out. Um, also, links are down below for any of the stuff on my bike as well. You get the clockwork windshield, uh, the crowd setup, the exhaust. Uh, the air cleaner, the sea, a few things on there. So all the links are down below. Hit the affiliate links if you want to make your bike look really nice or customize it anywhere near what mine looks like. Um, I think we pretty much covered everything. I hope that I was some help and some assistance to you guys and your future plans. I'm going to do so many long rides from now on. I swear to God, like I really fell in love with that long ride. It felt great. Um, I can't wait for the next trip. I can't wait to share them with you guys. Um, and if you are the type of person that takes a lot of long rides, what are some of the tips that you use? What are some of the things that you do uh, or pack or whatever it is to make it feel more comfortable when you're out there? Um, share the tips. I'm pretty sure people want to know. Let's all share this information. Share the video, like, comment, subscribe. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and you want to see more cool stuff like this or my cool bike, then go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, man. It's free to subscribe and it's free to like, guys. Helps the channel out. Doesn't cost you anything. Um, I think that's going to be it. I am going to go over to the uh, Torque Custom Seco shop over here. Hang out with Mike. Go over a few things because we got to order some more parts for the bike. And that will probably be its own video. So tune in for that. Anyways, like always, let the force be with you. Ride safe and enjoy the ride, baby. Peace. Hey! Hi! Look who it is! What are you doing? What's up, man? Hey. Hanging out? Fucking not, try not to die. <laughs> I had a blowout. Wait, oh, on your bike? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, almost a semi, semi blowout. Yeah, semi blowout, not really a blowout. Wow. I was on the PA turnpike and all of a sudden my handlebars went crazy. Pulled over to the side of the road. I'm like, can you check my rear tire when I'm sitting on this bit thing and see if it's low? thing was flatter than a pancake. Wow. And it wasn't holding air, so I think the bee popped on it. That's wild, man. Well, like I was saying, guys, I carry my air pump with me, so know your, your tire gauge and, and how much air is in your tire. It's very, very important to know the amount of air that's in your tire. Also, I don't have one, but I'm going to be carrying one soon. Carry a, a, a tire plug. In case you do get a flat on the road, plug that sucker up, and you're ready to go on the road and either make it to the next dealership get on a tire but you'll get on the road anyways i'm gonna see you guys later bye bye